Your morning blitz begins now. I actually, I actually did sit down in the shower yesterday. Really? It wasn't by choice. Were you crying? Did you slip? I did. No. I swear to God, I stepped. Uh. I had a stand-up shower. Yeah. And we, during the girls' graduation. Wait, what, what would you have as opposed to a stand-up shower? Well, in one of our bathrooms, there's a tub and shower. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just a shower. Yeah, just oh, a stand-up gotcha, shower. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay. it's not a... Um, it's not a... Uh... I thought you had one of those chairs. <laughs> no, I don't have an old person shower chair. <laughs> okay. So, yesterday... Um, on Saturday, we had the girls' graduation party. And the boy had to work. And he got home, like, right as everything was going. So, we already had people at the house when he got home. So we didn't want him to use the main shower bathroom upstairs because he works at a car dealership and Lauren had spent however long cleaning the house for guests or whatever. So we told him to shower in the stand-up shower in the basement bathroom. So he took all the stuff that he needs. Like someone, some girl someplace told him about this like Bath and Body Works shampoo that sounds it's like sex panther it's terrible <laughs> yeah. like it sounds it so, smells so bad so he it's gets like axe for uh, oh, your hair i don't know what it is <laughs> so he gets his sex panther out of his bathroom upstairs and takes it down to the shower the stand up shower bathroom and i forgot he still had his stuff spread out on the floor of the shower so your boy walks into the shower yesterday I stepped on something, slid, and I did the whole, like, ninja move to, like, not fall down. And then I realized, like, okay, I braced. I'm not going to break anything. But I just sat down <laughs> to re to reevaluate the situation. Uh, what, what was your level of rage between 1 and 10 at that oh, point? Oh, it was like a 13. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, because in my head, I'm like... I don't know if I'm more mad at you because you left your sex panther laying on the shower floor, or <laughs> if I would have got on you. <laughs> well, that too. Or if I would have fallen and I couldn't get up, I'd be naked when the paramedics got there. <laughs> <laughs> you really can't make this stuff up. Yeah, so oh, anyway, I, yeah. So it was just kind of it was an awkward moment. <laughs> yeah, like I really did sit in the shower. Is yeah. there a video or? We, no. can, we can blur out the sensitive areas. Last time I posted, we'll see this. <laughs> Last time I posted a, my pictures and video of me in the shower, I got a content ban from okay. Instagram. <laughs> okay. All you could see was cellulite hanging in pubic hair. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Took out his bad oh, boobs and God. was juggling in. <laughs> Big boobs. Oh, no. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a jarring... Uh, what was in the morning, afternoon, whatever? Uh, it was in the afternoon <laughs> yesterday. <Okay>. The boys, <laughs> yeah, the boys, Sex Panther nearly did oh, me in. Oh gosh, <laughs> Sex Panther <laughs> is that really the name of it? No, oh. <laughs> no, it's like Harvest Moon or something. Like what? it's god awful. Like it's, <laughs> it must be made with real bits of the harvest <laughs> that have gone stale. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> like it's just awful. <laughs> like it's pungent. <laughs> <laughs> this is filth at its finest. Right. <laughs> it really is. Anyway. So somebody told him it smelled good? Is that the deal? I think some girl told him, because there was some girl, he never used to have it. He used to always use my, like, whatever stuff that I would buy. <laughs> and then, and I, I don't expect him to use what I buy. That's fine. But, like, all of a sudden, he started going to Bath and Body Works. And he's like, because some girl like gave him one, and then ever since, I think he got it. And oh, well, chicks must think this smells good. So <laughs> yes, I, I yes, should buy definitely. the whole assortment. Definitely, <laughs> and he did. Bought the whole assortment. <laughs> now let me ask, okay? Because I have found every single Bath and Body Works scent that I've ever purchased to be so overwhelming, even in the smallest amounts. I don't purchase there anymore. Yeah. I don't purchase any like lotions or anything from Bath and Body Works. It's too much. Like, I don't need to be choking everyone I pass by in the hallway. And that's what happens with some of those scents. So does anybody know of an understated lotion you can buy or something like that that's not gagging <laughs> to an know. entire office full of people? I don't know. I use a lot of, like, I use tea tree stuff, and then I use, I don't know what the other one that I use is, but it's kind of more subtle. Yeah. But I agree with you on Bath & Bodies. Like, I remember when every girl I knew had cucumber melon lotion. Yes, I'm like, too much. my God, yeah. I can smell the cucumber melon yes. lotion from the parking lot. And they are some nice scents in, like, low doses. They really are. I mean, they don't smell terrible. It's just too... 
I think maybe we're all putting on too much. Is that it? Yeah, maybe. I okay. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know when you're about to fall and you have that moment where your yeah. entire life, <laughs> like mm-hmm. you, you start thinking about all the things I did wrong yeah, just mid-fall. last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, I don't have enough time to redeem myself for any of this. <laughs> <laughs> if this is it, this is a hell of a way to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, for you and your family. Right? You see that scene? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, oh, why couldn't there be video? I'm sorry. I, next time yeah. I'll next time I'll set up a GoPro before I get in the shower just to capture any moment. My whole day happen. is ruined now. This is a complete disappointment. Sorry. Uh, do you have you ever worn shower shoes? No. <laughs> I'm just for, trying to help you out with the situation. No. You know how you do that in prison. You got to throw on the, the shower, shower shoes. shoes. Uh, it might help. I don't know. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll find I'll, you naked with shoes on. That'd be interesting. I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I did request a handicapped hotel room once when I stayed in a hotel room. I'm glad you said cap. I am too. Yeah, I thought he was going to end in handy. Me too. <laughs> See where your minds go. go. No, anyway, uh, but they had one of those shower chairs, and I'm like, man, I should get, I should try that out. I bet that's nice. <laughs> and I've never used it. Yeah, because sometimes you just want to. Hey, why not? You just want to sit down. You don't want to take a bath, but you also don't want to stand. That right. is a nice midpoint. Right. Yeah. A- agreed. Get a hit off that. See how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, We have got tickets once again to Daniel Tosh. Also tickets to see Sarah Silverman. Both those shows at Mershon. Tosh, of course, coming up this Sunday. And Sarah Silverman just announced uh, tickets going on sale tomorrow morning for her show on Sunday, November 3rd. Both uh, shows available through Ticketmaster.com. All right. Here's our Morning Blitz trivia question. 25 bucks up for grabs to waterbeds and stuff. Be the first one to text in the correct answer. Want to know... What is the name of the new flavor of Frosty at Wendy's? Man, I cannot wait to try one. Tell us what is the new flavor of the new Frosty is at it Wendy's? Bass? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you were so excited about it, I thought it might be a largemouth bass. Well, I mean, flavor. there is some truth to that. <laughs> they caught you a delicious bass. Yeah, not, not at Wendy's. Well, not at Wendy's, but tell us what is the name of the flavor. Be the first one to tell us at 99700 and get that gift card. Faith No More. One of Derek's favorite bands on the Morning Blitz. 624. I'm Lewis. That's Dick Rick. She's Kelly Quinn. And he's not wrong, too. He said they are one of the most underrated bands. And he Agree. Is, he is absolutely correct about that. Agree. Roger said, if you can taste your cologne, perfume, or body spray, it's too much. So <laughs> bathe in it when you only need a two-second spray or a double tap. You're not wrong. Uh, Morning Blitz trivia question. What is the new flavor of Frosty at Wendy's? The name of it is Triple Berry Frosty. Mm. It sounds amazing. Is it berry flavor or real berries? Yeah. Either uh, way, I'm in. Don't get me well, wrong. I mean, I've never seen anything real like any chunk of anything ever at a frosty i don't know that yeah, that would go through the true. machine very well it's well you know it's one of those oh, yeah, ice cream yeah, machines yeah, yeah. kind of deal but uh so is it like a, a sherbet or is it you know what do you mean in frosty form yeah it's in frosty form i mean yeah it comes out just like it's going to be the same consistency of a, or are you just taking your vanilla frosting? frosting and throwing three different berry flavored juices yeah, in there? Yeah, because they always take the, the vanilla out of the rotation when they bring in another flavor. That's so, right. Me. Well, yeah. no, this is and this is replacing the uh, the orange dream sickle. That's a flavor that everybody likes in the summer. I'm not down with orange dream sickle. I either. never have been. Uh uh-uh. uh. They call it dream sickle. Yeah, well. Don't I don't want popsicle mixed with ice cream. <laughs> yeah. I want one or the other. I well, agree. This is uh blackberry, raspberry, and strawberry. Doug said, that sounds good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Doug said, damn, I was really excited for the ill-tempered sea bass flavored Frosty. I know. <laughs> Missed opportunity on that one, Wendy's. I don't even eat bass. Let alone do I want to drink a bass Are they flavored. ill-tempered? Why? Do you feel like you... Because <laughs> they're very fishy. They got a very fishy taste. So you'll catch one. That bass is out there swimming around enjoying life. And then all of a sudden you hook him by the mouth, drag him out of the water, yeah. throw him up on your deck, show him off. Yeah, take a picture, weigh him. Yeah. Now, if it's a in. tournament, I'm going to put him in my live well and take him up and then have him weighed, and then he's going to get let go. So no. Then he's going to go, like I said, then he's going to go back and tell his friends he was just abducted by aliens, and they're going to laugh at him and call him crazy. You never enjoyed a fine <laughs> Chilean sea bass? Well, that's different. Yeah. 
That would be different. Sea bass tastes way different than freshwater bass. Yeah. You guys know who Mitch Hedberg is, don't you? Yes. Yeah. He does that bit where he says, you know, that, that fishing show on TV, they mm-hmm. catch the fish and then let it go. She said they it don't want to wanna eat the fish. They just want to make it late for something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thank you for sending me that. Poor dude just down there swimming around. I'm at a good swim today. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait. <laughs> uh, anyway... Yeah, it's uh, it's it's out uh, on Monday, <laughs> and it'll be available for a limited time at Wings. <laughs> Jeremy said, "Don't like creamsicle? F you." <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Everybody's entitled to it. Yeah, you just don't like it. No, you know what bothers me? Like people who default to cookies and cream. There's so many other flavors out there to choose from. Why does that? I don't know. All these because you come up with these things all the time that bother you. I can't believe people do. Why do you care? Nobody's forcing you to do it. I don't know. But again, I'm the weird guy who likes honey pistachio ice cream. So okay, I don't like that. Is that that's a thing? I don't know why. Is it the like the the, um, private selection? Yeah. I try some of those sometimes because I do. Oh, see, I like a chunky ice cream. This is this is it. But for some reason, that flavor does not sit well with me. I don't know why, but I will try every kind. If you've got chunks in your ice cream, send it my way. (laughs) I love a chunky ice cream. But I do default a lot to cookies and cream. Like Thick and I love that homemade brand. Yeah. Cookies and cream. It is delicious. I love moose tracks, too. Okay. But I really am a great, huge fan of graters and like Ben and Jerry's and Haagen Dazs and like ice creams with like real cream when you go in uh, when you roll into the cold stone creamery oh yeah do you buy one of their already selected things or do you make your own make my own baby thick oh yeah i make my own me too i also tip them not to sing (laughs) oh i've never experienced that they sing in there yeah all the time i don't i didn't know that i didn't know that went on i have never experienced a singing either oh really I should, uh, I should feel lucky then, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, like I said, I tip them not to sing. <laughs> All right, Bradley Dalton was the first one to text in the correct answer from Groveport. So Brad's got 25 bucks to waterbeds and stuff. Metallica on the morning blitz, 640 with Thick Kelly and Lewis. Caught you a delicious bass. I dropped that in there. I heard. <laughs> I always like putting something in that little open space of that song. Oh, yeah. It's Nikki's new favorite version. It's oh. sad but true. It's good. She, uh, Popcorn Pam said she is uh, making a uh, flavored popcorn. I lost it, but it's got pineapple upside down, cake in it, and some other. I'm oh, cre- be- creamsicle popcorn. Yeah, I would be down with that. Banana pudding and pineapple upside yeah, that's it. down. I would try that in a heart With fresh strawberries. Absolutely. All right. Her s'mores is amazing. Her s'mores popcorn. And then someone said the uh, raspberry cho- raspberry chip ice cream. Phenomenal. You hmm. ever had that? I don't think so. Raspberry ice cream with chocolate chip? Oh, like from Grater's. Grater's uh, makes it, but somebody yeah. else makes it. There's another version too, but yeah. I like the Grater's yes. a lot. So good. Never Sometimes those a- chocolate chunks are like as big as your fist. <laughs> Lauren will make a chocolate cake with raspberry on it. Yeah, I'm not a big fa- fan of the chocolate and fruit flavors. Oh, great. More for us. Yeah. I, that's <laughs> fine. I'm just, you know. Did your parents ever tell you that as a kid? I know. A lot of people love it. Like, a lot of people, like, people love, like, chocolate-covered strawberries. Do you guys uh, like... It's a, just a weird flavor to me. Do you guys like a root beer float? I absolutely will never, ever drink a root beer float. <laughs> I guess no. she doesn't. Me either. <laughs> Ugh. Do you, Rick? Um, No, not, not so much. Well, I just don't like root beer. I don't like the whole ice cream and... In a Coke or a root beer. Me people. neither. No, thank you. Yeah. Keep your ice cream out of the my floats, soda. The floats. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's what you're called. Yeah. Okay. That's a summer thing, too, but I'm not... I don't vibe on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like hot fudge on my ice cream, not root beer. Yeah. <laughs> With you on that. <laughs> All right. So I asked if, if you guys ever washed anything in your dishwasher other than dishes. Never. Lewis? No. I mean, uh, that's what a washing machine's for, for the other stuff, well, right? Well, okay, so I do actually have, and it's made for a dishwasher. It's this, it's a case uh, for a hat, and it's shaped like a hat. It's plastic. It's got just, you know, little bars, and you put the hat in it, and it snaps closed, and you set it in your dishwasher so that your hat doesn't lose its shape and stuff while it's in the dishwasher. Getting that's what washed. Mike Funk said. Oh, did he? Yeah, he oh. just said it was a good way to... Um, I was reading as you were talking. He just said it's a good way to wash your ball cap. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I will so, try that. But they do make this... This. It's like a cage. 
Okay. You know, that's shaped like a hat. Your hat fits and it fitted over this, you know, like a hump where your head would be. And then it closes and snaps Can shut. Can I ask you if you wash it along with your dishes? No. Okay. No, I don't. All right. Yeah. You do that separately. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, you know, because if you put a hat in the washing machine, yeah, it comes out not so good. Ah. You know, it's, it's all deformed. and Yeah. But it's in the dishwasher, it stays perfectly in that cage and comes out. I feel out. like I wouldn't have the patience to separate my hats from my dishes well i mean i don't know if it would hurt it yeah I don't it's know all why like I, really really super hot water right yeah. we're cleaning everything yeah and it's not like the the hat and the dishes are touching it's got its own you know you put it on the rack by Plus, itself if you have like bass juice on your hat and then you <laughs> might have i mean it's like it's no different from having bass juice on your dinner plate what? right <laughs> Look how muddy my tail. Right, yeah, and then you get that Somebody in there with your market hat and your dishes. <laughs> That's a market ex- bass juice. <laughs> <laughs> get yours. <laughs> well, this uh, this daughter walks in on her mom, and her mom has loaded the dishwasher up with vegetables. So she's going to clean her vegetables in the dishwasher. Now, she's just going to run it on rinse. She's not using soap. She's just going to run the dishwasher on rinse to clean her vegetables. And so the dishwasher's running when her daughter walks in. And her daughter's, like, not buying it. She's like, what are you doing? And the mom starts to get a little frustrated with her daughter and gets defensive. But the audio's great. Here it is. You put all these fruits and vegetables in here, and then what? I'm going to wash them. Doesn't it only bring hot water? No, in the rings with cold water. I, I done it before, Lara. Stop bothering me. <laughs> Go, I, go. I need to. I need to open it. No. I, when did I finish? I need to open it. No. I need to see. No. <laughs> you're not. Let me open it. Yeah, no, you're not. Yeah, How are you gonna open it? Let me finish. No, I need to feel if it's cold. Cause it's running. Oh my God, Lara! You, you're gonna ruin the machine. Why you open my machine? Oh, it's it's cold. cold water. It's not cold. It's cold. It's actually cold. Yeah, I know. I done it before. Look, look at how you did so much mess. Look. You gotta clean it. Why you stop it? I I didn't believe. I thought dishwashers only bring out. I water. say believe me. When I say believe me, it's me. Believe me. I I know what I'm doing, Lara. <laughs> That's right. I love it. The kids are always treating their parents like they're dummies. We've done so it. We've funny. all done it. Like you said, you're at peak knowledge apparently when you're 16. When I say believe me, it's me. Believe me. Right. <laughs> Don't question me. So she washes her vegetables in the dishwasher. Her fruit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And her fruit. And I, I actually... Seems like a little I mean, just, overkill. Like, okay. Can I ask... I mean, it like, was loaded. Not, the whole dishwasher's loaded. But it's just... You're just washing with water, right? You're not throwing yes. a little pod in there or anything. No, just re- just on rinse. So why wouldn't you just throw it in the sink? I, maybe your, I don't know. I she just don't wants know. a power wash. She wants to maybe, power yeah. wash that stuff. And there, I mean, literally, like I'm, like I said, the dishwasher, top rack and bottom rack, completely full, full of fruits and vegetables. Wow. wow. Do you wash your shoes in the washer and dryer? In the washer and dryer? Or would you wash your shoes in the dishwasher? I'm just curious. If you wash a ball cap in the dishwasher, Uh. could the same theory apply to shoes? I don't know why not. I'm just asking. I don't know why not. Do you know what he's telling you're washing your shoes in the dryer? Go, don't, 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 don't. I never throw throw them in the dryer. I can't do it. It messes messes them up. Well, not. I don't know if it messes up the shoes. It messes up my brain function (laughs) to hear that thumping. Now, I know when I wash my boxing and kickboxing wraps i put them in like a zip mesh bag and then i wash it so it doesn't entangle with all Wait, the rest your of what your kickboxing my what? boxing and my kickboxing hand wraps and foot wraps i wash them in a oh. mesh bag so they yeah they do tie, they other tie than yeah. the rest of the laundry up try that once yeah. and learn the hard way <laughs> uh taylor said the dishwasher hat cage has been around since the late 80s and i, oh, I think i've nice. had mine since about the mid 90s okay yeah. And then, uh, and I, I've seen this one too. Daniel Daniel said people make salmon in the dishwasher. Really? Yeah, I've seen that. There's, I've seen those videos. Because that never... water gets so hot in there, you, you're steaming it. See, I would never eat anything I cooked in the dishwasher. Well, but aren't you throwing high power hot water at it too? Well, yeah, but Your I think salmon? it's wrapped. I think it's oh, wrapped yeah. in foil. Okay. Yeah, and I was picturing it just, you just throw it oh. in the top rack. Okay. <laughs> like on the grill? Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy said he has a shoe drying rack. I didn't even know such a thing existed. And Doug said if you dry your shoes in the dryer, laces together in a knot and close the door, that uh, 
keeps the drying. Yes, the yes, yes, yes. Uh, somebody say it did again? say you tie your shoelaces if you want to dry them in the dryer. Uh-huh. Tie the shoelaces together in a knot uh-huh. and then hang it like a little bit over the door. Close the door and then you've got your shoelaces caught in the door oh. and it just hangs the shoes there to okay. be dry. Okay, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's a great idea. Friggin' love that. Okay, all right. Uh, we got a text that says flashlights or dishwasher safe. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> oh, okay, please don't. Will you let me know I didn't if bring you're it inviting up. me to dinner if that's what you're doing in your dishwasher. <laughs> Good night. You got to do that with I the family. We've got to have though. limits here, people. You don't want the kids opening the dishwasher to find. I, although it's pretty safe for me because they never unload the dishwasher, so yeah, I could leave that thing in safe. there for a week and yeah. no one would notice. <laughs> No one ever takes a peek Are in that Are you sure washer. it's my turn? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was great. Learned something new today. How to dry the, the shoes in the dryer. I love it. Thank you, guys. Hey, 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 hey. This morning Blitz. Thick, Kelly, and Lewis. A little Boba Flex and a little Don't You Forget About Me on a Thursday <laughs> oh man, you hear that song, and all I can think of is Breakfast Club. It's just like iconic. Oh yeah, every most time. Definitely. I just oh, as soon as you hear that first drum beat, it's like oh, there's Judd Nelson walking away with his diamond earring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Judd, of course, a member of the Brat Pack: Andrew McCarthy, Demi Moore, Emilio Estevez, Molly Ringwald, uh, Ali Sheedy, but. Uh, was um was he was Charlie Sheen not in it? Charlie Sheen wasn't in the Brad Pack. No, he wasn't. No, he, was he only wasn't. Just Emilio Estevez. Isn't that weird. And Emilio didn't want to be. He didn't like it. He refused to work with anyone after uh, anyone from the Breakfast Club. After the Breakfast Club, he refused to work with any of them again because he didn't want to be uh, typecast. Yeah. But unlike his father and his brother, he was proud of his Latin American heritage. Yes. Kept the Estevez name. Yes. <laughs> no sheen for that guy. So there's a new uh, documentary out on Hulu today. It's called Brats, and it's uh, it's about the Brat Pack. Andrew McCarthy uh, made it. You know, it's got uh, Rob Lowe also uh. in it. He's part of the the Brat Pack. Um, in uh, in the final scene, this is funny. I, I now I have to go back and see it. In the final scene of Pretty in Pink, they had to reshoot the ending. With Andrew McCarthy getting with Molly Ringwald, but he uh, was already prepared for his next role when this came up, so he had already cut his hair, so he had to wear a wig in that scene. I was like, "What?" <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, during the filming of Saint Elmo's Fire, Demi Moore had a sober coach on set the entire filming. Oh, good for her. Uh, Molly Ringwald did not participate in this documentary because she said she'd rather keep looking forward. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've heard interviews with Molly Ringwald. I really like her. Um, that sounds annoying to me. Well, the thing is, is that she does acknowledge what a humongous uh, uh, impact her movies had on culture. Yeah. And they really did. And she understands that. So I'm really surprised that she wouldn't do a documentary on it because it was very impactful to a generation of people. She even talks about in one of the interviews I heard, she she talks about how she sat with her daughter, her young daughter at the time, uh, Mm -hmm. and watched The Breakfast Club uh, just because it was such a big movie. So I'm really surprised that she didn't go do this documentary. It's kind of disappointing. Yeah, it's like... what? what Because it's not preventing you from moving forward. It's just like... Let's nostalgia. These are enormous stars. Rob Lowe, Demi Moore, Emilio Estevez. They're trying to celebrate her. I mean, know. it's really interesting that you would kind of pull that on your old friends. Hmm. You know, I think about the movie The Outsiders, which had Rob Lowe in it, but it also had Sheen and Patrick Swayze. I'm just surprised they aren't, aren't, weren't also part of that club, the Brat Pack. Yeah, I don't know. All those John Tom Hughes, Cruise was in that. John Hughes movies were amazing. Just I know that wasn't a John Hughes, but John Hughes yeah, movies. Yeah, right. To right. me, I'm like you have to know if you were a kid and know that era. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. and, and an actor in those movies, I'm not sure why you would 
refuse to be involved in that. It is kind of annoying. <laughs> I've never understood why, if you're a part of something that's so big, and again, um, I'm the 80s, the Brat, the Brat Pack in the 80s was kind of like one of the signature things. Yeah. Same with the cast of Friends. Like, you do everything you can to get away from it. I don't understand why you... I understand the need to not be typecast, but eventually, like, why don't you look back on it and go, why am I not a part of this? This is what made everything that I have. Yeah. And embrace it a little better. Yeah. You know? Hmm. Goose said, if uh, if we were the Breakfast Club, I would be the jock, Lewis would be the misfit, and Kelly would be Ali Sheedy. No, Kelly would be Molly Ringwald. Um. If you, yeah. Yeah. W- what's the difference between Ali Sheedy, the nutcase? That's. Oh, we're talking about. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh. No. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, because Molly Ringwald was the good girl. Come on now. <laughs> what was her name in that? Uh, Claire. 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 Yeah. Claire's when a, Judd, when a, Judd Nelson said, "I Claire's a fat girl's Claire's name." Claire's a fat or girl's name. Yeah. Oh <laughs> gosh, I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take Molly Ringwald all day long, for Ringwald. sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think Lewis and I could both be Judd Nelson's spot. I don't. I was. No, not, no, I, mean, no. I was I not a jock. Uh, I was never a jock. No, I'd all right. I mean, you I'd get Anthony football. Michael Hall. Yeah, you're the. You played more football than I did. I'd be the misfit though. No, you'd be Emilio Estevez. Dude. You would be Emilio Estevez. Yeah, I would be Judd Nelson going to get the weed from my locker. No, I really feel like you're Anthony Michael Hall. Oh, please. I was in the physics club. Are you kidding yeah, me? Kind no, of you're idea. out of your mind. Yeah, the you're way not, as okay. analytical as, uh, he, as he is about everything. Oh, just so straight. Yeah. I mean, you cannot divert from the straight ahead path. This guy loses yeah. it. Yeah, you're on. You're Anthony Michael Hall. You I'm guys sorry, are for insane. sure. <laughs> Three things you need to know before you go. Okay, we're so limited on time, I just have to say, I figured out, you are not Judd Nelson from Breakfast Club Thick Rick. You are who Matthew Broderick played in War Games. That (laughs) reminds me of you so much. That is the perfect match. Matthew Broderick from War Games is Thick Rick. Shall we play a game? Is that right? Am I close? Uh, That that was definitely part of my uh, childhood, for sure. I was I like that match. I was hacking stuff, but then there was the... uh, Stoner metalhead breakdance. Okay, too. all right. So maybe a mix of the two. <laughs> mix of the two. All I right. just pictured you was more of a young Corey Feldman. <laughs> Get out of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a, a former Columbus police officer has admitted to stealing cocaine while on the job and then selling it. And he's now facing at least 10 years in prison. It's 10 years to life. This crime. A 31 year old John Castillo of Grove City pleaded guilty yesterday to possession with intent to distribute five kilos or more of cocaine. He and another uh, police officer who inve- were investigating drug crimes back in February 2021 are accused of conspiring to take 10 kilos of cocaine from a house that they were doing a bust at and not turning it into evidence and turning around and selling it, etc. and so forth. Uh, so Castillo, uh, he pleaded guilty, but the other guy involved, Joel Medford, uh, he's taking his case to trial. So we'll see how he fares that way. Appeals lawyers are requesting that the mass murder conviction against George Wagner IV be thrown out. Now, we all remember George Wagner IV. In fact, the entire Wagner family who was charged with murdering the entire Roden family down in Pike County in 2016. Oh, yeah. All right. So George Wagner IV, he's the son. He was sentenced to eight life sentences uh, during his 2022 trial. Uh, They ended up getting his mom and his brother to testify against him and they received, I think, lesser sentences or something. Um, But now his attorneys are arguing that there were errors during George Wagner IV's trial, uh, including, they say, coercive plea deals that led to his mom and brother testifying against him. So they want a new trial uh, and they're going to try to go for that. Now, uh, Billy Wagner III, the father in all of this, he still has not gone to trial. These murders happened in 2016. I think they caught them. What was it? A year later? Two years? I can't remember. It was a while yeah, later. Remember, yeah. they all moved to oh, Alaska yeah. real yeah. quick and then yeah. came back. All right. Well, uh, Billy Wagner the third is still not gone on trial. I don't hmm. even think he's scheduled to go on trial until January of next year. Is he sitting in jail or is he? Yeah. Out oh on? no, oh, he's okay. in jail. He's in jail. But that is so wild to me that his attorneys have been able to kick this down the road so far. All right. After organizers for Nathan's famous Fourth of July hot dog eating contest said Joey Chestnut would not compete this year because of the deal he had with Impossible Foods, which is a rival brand, Netflix quickly announced 
A new hot dog eating competition that will feature Joey Chestnut and his fiercest rival, Takeru Kobayashi. Let's go! It'll be a live contest on Netflix on September 2nd. It's called Chestnut versus Kobayashi Unfinished Beef. <laughs> well, you know, Kobayashi just uh, he announced his retirement last month He's due to back health in, concern. Baby. Due to oh, health concerns. Dang. So I'm like. So life is on the line here I, I, during this live yes. Netflix event. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, they are going to uh, be chowing down on all beef hot dogs in this uh, live contest on Netflix. Um, now, Joey says, so, you know, Joey Chestnut signed a deal, apparently. Impossible Foods won't confirm it, but with Impossible Foods, which makes vegan hot dogs. Right. But Joey Chestnut said, Impossible Foods supports my choice to compete in any competition. He says, meat eaters shouldn't have to be exclusive to just one wiener. <laughs> And I agree. There's a lot of people on the internet that believe the same thing. Exactly. exactly. And in real Uh, life. Joey, he also said, he he said, this is going to deprive the great fans of the holiday's usual joy and entertainment. I mean, we can get other people to eat hot dogs, Joey. I know, uh, but he's the champ. You got to beat the man to be the man. No, come on, Ric Flair. It's to be the man, you got to beat the man. Whatever. And Joey Chestnut is the man. Woo! I will say, uh, Major League Eating which is the governing body of the, you know, competitive eating, uh, did say they were leaving the door open for a deal to be worked out to have him get back in and defend his title. So oh, really? there is a chance okay. somehow. I don't know. But he if he's not there, I'm not watching. Now, I'll watch him and Kobayashi on Labor Day, but I'm not watching the hot dog eating contest if he's not in is it. Is this all a manufactured thing? Did I just fall prey to no, I don't the think classic... So. We're going to make some fake drama and everybody will talk about it. No, I don't think so because Major League Eating is completely separate from Nathan. This is Nathan's that's banned yeah. him, not Major League Eating. M- 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 MLE's trying to work it out. Okay. So, right. I, no, I don't, th- I don't think it's there's some kind of promotional scam going okay. on. Okay. All right. All right. Well, those are your three things. It's 713 on your morning blitz. Kelly Quinn, Thick Rick, I'm Lewis, and we want to set you up with tickets. Uh, a choice, because life is all about choices. You can see Daniel Tosh at the Mershon or Sarah Silverman and her new boobs at the Mershon. Oh, did she get new boobs? They've been there for a while, but I mean, they're new, I guess, by some standards. <laughs> <laughs> she pulls out her breast and she's juggling them. <laughs> they're new to Jimmy Kimmel because they weren't there when he was. <laughs> anyway. How... Oh. Hard of a stink eye is Sarah Silverman giving you right now for saying that? I think she would be happy that I acknowledge them. Big boobs. <laughs> I really do believe that. Do you? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know C- Sarah Silverman well enough to know. Well, if you go and you get fake boobs, you obviously want, want them to be to noticed. noticed. Why else would you do that? Correct. What he said. Well, we I mean, agree. There could be medical concerns. I mean, people get them all the time when they... <laughs> like let, let the record breast show, cancer or whatever. Let the record show that at 714 on Thursday, June 13th, Thick Rick and Lewis are on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you want uh, tickets to see either Daniel Tosh or Sarah Silverman, text the word CHOICE to 99700 and you can, well, choose. Stephanie Alexandria on your morning blitz, 725 with Thick, Kelly, and Lewis. And congrats to Chris Brown from West Jefferson chose the Sarah Silverman tickets. Hopefully, this Chris Brown is a finer quality human being than the Chris Amen. Brown we all know. Agreed. I could tell just by his voice, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you deal. treat your lady right. You don't go rihanna her at the uh, Sarah Silverman show, buddy. Jeez. Anyway, congrats, Chris. Thank you for listening and enjoy your Sarah Silverman. Tell her boobs I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> now, that might get you in trouble. I didn't not you, him. Oh. If he goes up and said, hey, I'm supposed to talk. Can I ask if, like, boys never grow up about boobs, right? I mean, you nope. just, you learn how to keep your mouth shut. I mean, some do. Not all. But you learn how to not say the things you're thinking, but you still are, like, 12 when it comes to boobs. Is that, boobs. Tr- is that right? Yeah. With boys? You ever, you ever yeah. on a jog at, like, the park and... You catch yourself staring and then you get nervous and then you realize, wait a minute, I've got sunglasses on. I'm good. Is that just me? (laughs) (laughs) I just think, well, because, you know, I mean, you know how guys and sex are. You know how guys and sex are. And I just think to a guy, boobs even covered, 
still represent nudity because they see them in their mind. You know what the they hardest picture thing? them, they think of nudity, and that makes them think of sex, so that's why guys love it. You know what the hardest thing to do? The, one of the greatest exercises of willpower is? And this goes even, this is even more willpower than, you know, enduring Costco on a Saturday twice. Um, it's when, if you're on a walk or a jog or a shuffle at the park, uh-huh. and a smoking hot lady runs by, and you've got sunglasses on, so you catch her on the first glance, the resist of the willpower to turn around oh. <laughs> is in. It's, it's intense. <laughs> Kelly, so I Kelly's been looking at you like you are so some easy no, ass. Artist. Not at all. I figured, you know, I I didn't know. That, I I figured there was no maturing when it comes to boobs and all. Or the for, thing, yeah. For some guy, I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a classier human being. I just keep my focus. Yeah, you keep you keep moving straight ahead. I, and I don't think you're immature. I just feel like it's a just that's just built in. That's just built in. But, so uh, when we're talking about Sarah Silverman, <laughs> rather than saying she's a great comedian, we talk about her boobs. Is that pretty much how it goes for dudes? I'm I, I, <laughs> just asking. I, I, am, I am much more of a butt guy. Yeah. Okay. Like, I love Heather's butt, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Popcorn Pam says, no, Kelly, they don't. <laughs> I mean, with all fondness, I ask this. You, you guys crack me up. <laughs> you know... That can be considered rude, but there are some things that uh, we do that are rude that we didn't even... We had this topic a while ago. We were talking about things that we do as humans that are rude that we don't perceive as being rude. Okay. So, we uh, want to come back and discuss this in detail? Yeah, yeah, because we're up against a break. But Cause, yeah, Because there is- are some things that are on the list that do merit being on this list. Like constantly talking about a comedian's boobs? Is that on the list? Yeah. Is that- oh! <laughs> Checking out someone's boobs while they're trying to get their fitness on. You know. Uh, Tristan, as a grown man, says if he could ever have a superpower, it would be x-ray vision to see through <laughs> women's clothing. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> 7.37 on your morning blitz with Thick Rick, Kelly Quinn, and Lewis on a Thursday morning. Okay, we're going to talk rude. It's so rude to just stop talking. I know. I'm just what kidding. Is that? What are you doing over there? <laughs> it is. Just like kidding. looking at us. Like you were going to tell this stuff. Okay, so we're doing things that you do that are rude that you might not know yeah, are rude. We, we picked back up on this. So what was it? A couple of weeks or a week or so ago, we were talking about things that people do that are rude that we don't even realize that we're doing okay. is rude. So, so they, now we got add, more. Yeah, this came from BuzzFeed originally. Now they've added a couple of things, and I see this one all the time: hogging the sidewalk. Hogging the side. A group of three or more people walking towards you, and they all go side by side by side, and they de- make no effort whatsoever to let you pass. So you have to go in the grass. Yeah. Okay, that happens in the mall too. Yeah, when, but bunch of kids are together. Which, yep. You know, it's fine. They're having a good time and all, but it's like, oh, you're taking up the entire, entire side of the mall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's when you play chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you just see that, like they don't wa- allow for any kind of, and it's worse if they have their dog. Because, like, I always try to avoid... If I'm walking my dog, I always try to avoid people. Right. So like, most people do. Yes. Mm-hmm. But then you're walking side by side by side with your dog, and your dog is... So you're taking up the other... The most of the lane, and then you have your dog stretched out... <laughs> the rest of the way. The rest way. of the way. Yeah. So you're covering the whole gamut of space, but... I have actually watched people who who saw somebody else coming at them with their dog. They're walking their dog, and another dog and a person are coming, and they will go across the street mm-hmm. because they know it's not going to go well. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. I think it's, you know. Uh, when you're driving in a parking lot and you stop to let someone walk, which you should do because you're supposed to yield to pedestrians. But instead of, instead of understanding that the shortest distance between point A and point B is a straight line, that person walking has to take the most diagonal, out-of-the-way path possible <laughs> uh-huh. or go as slow as humanly possible so you have to sit there and wait. That is annoying. Well, I mean, let's just say that it's an exercise in patience sometimes. We're all we're always learning. And I will add to this. When you're pulling into a parking lot and you're going down one of the parking aisles to find a spot, and there are people that walk in the center of the damn aisle. Instead of moving over to one side or the other, mm-hmm. they full-blown meander around in the center. And you're like, come on, yeah. one side or the other so I can get by. All right, let me hit you with this one. Okay. Okay. I 
am constantly walking around the halls here at work on my phone. I yeah. head buried in my phone. It happens all the time. And I can't tell you the number of people in the last few weeks that I have nearly run over just because I'm not paying attention when I'm turning corners, my head's in my phone, etc. So I've got this kind of joke with our engineer, Bill. And, you know, he's always like, oh, Kelly's on her phone. Don't worry. We all look out for you now. Um, So I said, I swore yesterday, and this is honest to God truth. I swore yesterday afternoon. I'm keeping my phone in the studio. When I go out to walk around, I'm not going to be holding my phone anymore because it is rude. It's rude. I get it that it's rude, but I'm addicted to my phone, so I can't stop. And so I swore to myself yesterday, that's it. Leaving my phone in the studio. Um, probably six minutes ago, I just ran smack into Bill, our engineer, while I was buried in my phone in the hallway. Mm. I can't stop, you guys. And I know it's rude. Do you need a 12-step? Yes. It, you know, it's not physically addictive. You know that, right? right? You can stop. You won't get the shakes or withdrawals. Yeah, or yeah. I made a whole smoothie and left my phone sitting in here. You believe that? Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, I, the thing is, is I know that's rude. I know it's rude to do that, and I can't stop. <laughs> uh, Zach, the name <laughs> of the game we play on Tuesdays is Soundiculous. And uh, Stephanie said people not using their turn signals when they're changing lanes or making turns, and also people hogging the left-hand lane when they're going significantly slower. We have had this discussion, Steph, and you are 100% right. <laughs> but, yeah, I think... Uh, oh. Doug said, don't get me started on the people that fly across the parking lot sideways across spaces and almost hit you. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's an issue in itself. Okay, I have a couple things that I found on a list here. Uh, a rude thing that you might not knew, know that you're doing. Just passing the salt instead of passing the salt and pepper together. You should always pass them together, I guess. It's oh, really? rude to just pass the salt. Even if somebody says pass the salt? I guess. What I if don't I know. say what if I just say pass could I, could you pass me the pepper, please? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I guess if you're being specific. Being specific, I guess. I don't know, but that's what they say on this list. Another thing is wearing too much perfume, which we talked about <laughs> earlier. Like when you're basically gagging everybody in the immediate area with your heavily scented lotions and perfumes. Connor Connor said, I drink them from the milk carton, but I live alone. I do, too. I oh, bought yeah, the blue Star Wars milk. It comes in a half gallon. I'm never going to have a whole glass at once, but I swig right from the carton. And every time the kids question it, I'm like, anybody else going to drink my milk? Nope. I didn't think so. Uh, so you have, a, you have a, a motive there. I do. Okay. Here's another rude thing. Telling people to smile. You should not do that. Another Is thing- that really rude? Yeah, you should have never tell somebody what to do with their face. I learned the hard way, Lewis. <laughs> oh, I didn't know this. This is educational It was for me. National Smile Day, and I told Kelly, I said, Kelly, I want you to smile today. Oh, my gosh, did I, I learn said, oh, real quick. Oh, you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. Um, also, when somebody's trying to tell you a story about themselves, and you have to re- always relate it back to yourself, you always have to change oh, yeah. gears and talk about yourself make when somebody else you. is trying to, yeah, make it about you. That is rude, and I don't think a lot of us realize it when we do it. Okay. Randa said, I have two pet peeves. One is people in the elevator hugging the side, and then when the door opens, you walk in, and they pop out. And the other is when I hold the door open for someone, and they don't say thank you. Okay. You always let people disembark before you enter an elevator. The people who are getting off get to go first. Yes. You don't jam yourself on. That's the same thing in like a subway or whatever. People who are getting off the vehicles, subways, get to go first. Do you know what drives me insane? And I know everybody is guilty of doing this. You've All of us have been there. You're on a plane. The plane lands. You're in the back of the plane. And all of a sudden, someone's jumping up out of their seat. And they're forcing themselves into your overhead to get their bag out so they can... Okay. You're not going anywhere. Sit the F down. You're in the back of the plane. You got another 15 minutes before they're going to start filing out. Yeah. I do stand up because typically my back is hurting at that point, so I need to stretch. But uh, I understand. It's like people get off. Right, and and they're stretching around somebody else that's standing (laughs) there, banging people, trying not to hit them with the overhead luggage that they knew didn't fit in there when they went to shove it in anyway. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Uh, And then the last one that they added on this one was interrupting someone while they're looking at their phone, Kelly Quinn. Everyone accepts that it's rude to look at your phone in the middle of a conversation, but it can be the other way too, where if someone you're trying to scroll through something and somebody's trying to talk and to you. Interrupt you. Oh, I see. So you guys are the rude ones, not it's, me. It's actually called fubbing. <laughs> What's that? It's called fubbing. Oh. 
phone snubbing when you don't give your partner your full attention and you keep staring at your phone? Okay, but what he's talking about is when somebody's on their phone and somebody else comes up and interrupts them. Oh, okay. When they're busy doing something right. on their phone. I saw, I'm sorry, I had it backwards. But, no, but uh, that's yeah. a, no, it's good to know. Yeah, so yeah, you know, you're it, like if uh, if Lauren's trying to talk to Lewis, you know, and she's she wants him to hear her. And he's like, yeah, uh huh. But then he's looking at his phone and he's scrolling through his phone, uh huh, uh huh. But really, so what did she's I say? The rude one. She's the rude one for interrupting what no, he's no, no. doing on this his is, phone. This is af- I'm talking about after she starts talking to him. He's not on his phone. She starts. To- <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, yeah. so I'm we trying all- to make my phone use just be to be the most important thing in my social life. <laughs> so we all have things that we do that we don't even realize are rude. Who knew? <laughs> the things you learn at 746 on the Morning Blitz. Now, three things you need to know before you go. Well, how about this? They never give up in Columbus on a rape case. After nearly 30 years, a man is now in custody in connection with a Columbus rape case. Franklin County prosecutors say they have DNA evidence that shows 53-year-old Anthony Chennault broke into a 20-year-old woman's home and sexually assaulted her back in 1994. Wow. And how about this, what the prosecutor's office did? The prosecutor's office filed a DNA profile with a placeholder name in connection with the case. Case in 2013. So the rape happened in 1994. In 2013, they filed a profile and a placeholder name in order to keep it active past Ohio's 20 year statute of limitations on sex crimes. So the prosecutor's office is, w- made it possible for this woman to now and uh, for, for this to be prosecuted. Um, because obviously 1994 yeah, to 2024 is well past the the DNA, statute of man. limitations. That so DNA yeah, will get you. They say DNA evidence absolutely confirmed that uh, Anthony Chanel was a match, and they took him into custody yesterday. How about that? Thirty years later, good job. Yes, forty-three-year-old Texas man is dead. His thirty-five-year-old girlfriend critically injured when get this, they're on vacation in Mexico. Uh, Jorge Guillen and Lizette Zambrano. They're in the hot tub at their resort. It's called Resort Sonora in Puerto Penasco, which is on the Gulf of California. They got electrocuted in their hot tub. <laughs> A friend says so she looked over at the couple. They were not moving. Oh, my God. So she goes over. She's calling them. She starts to get in the hot tub. Instantly electrical shock. She starts to get she in? She started to get in. Why would you get in? I don't know. To, like, see if they were asleep or something? I'm not sure what she thought was going on. But she said when she touched the water, instant electrical Bam, shock. Yeah. She calls for help. The man, Jorge Guillen, was pronounced dead. The woman, Lizette Zambrano, was flown to a hospital in the U.S. in critical condition. And they're investigating now. Obviously, some electrical issue there in the hot tub. <gasps> as, so, do we know what's her? Is she so she's still in critical condition? Well, is that was the last is at last check? Still wow. in critical. I mean, that's wild. All right. Uh, how, how do you, what do you think about this? X is now hiding your likes. Uh, in an update posted on posted <laughs> posted on the platform, uh, X's engineering team says it will be making likes private. For everyone to better protect your privacy. Now, say you make a post, okay? You'll be able to see how many likes you're getting, but you can't see who liked it. And nobody else can search who liked your li- liked your post. So okay. if I make a post, if you make a post and I you think, click like, I think you'll be able to see it, but nobody else will or something. I'll be able to see the like, but you, will I be able to see that it was you that liked it? Okay. I, so, like on Facebook, if I hold my you know mouse over the like thing it, or over the people at it the top, you a like, list. It'll t- it'll show me a list of everybody okay. who liked yes. it. Yes, I don't know when you post yourself when you are po- when you are liking things. Say you see some post on X that's something controversial, or maybe you love Donald Trump and you would love to click on the likes on Donald Trump posts, okay. even though I know he's not at on X. But you don't want anybody to know you're a Trump lover, so you refuse so you won't like anything that has to do with Donald Trump because you don't want somebody else calling you out on it. But you want him to know you liked it. Or you just like you want it you want your algorithm to start giving you more political things that are up your alley or more uh, cat video content that's up your alley. Yeah, I don't want anybody knowing I like cat videos. 
<laughs> right. But I guess there are people will do that. They'll go through the likes and they'll call people out for liking certain. I don't know. Like you've got this whole big Israel Palestinian thing, which right. people are so you know uh, uh, emotional over it's on very either polarizing. side. It's very polarizing. Yeah. And you may not want to like something for fear of somebody seeing you taking a side yeah, I, I get or it. something. I get that. So X has taken that whole thing away that you can like anything you want and nobody's be going to be able to tell. But then what's really the point of liking it? Well, the point for you is to change up your algorithm okay. to be getting more videos that are along the things you like to okay, see. Okay, I gotcha. Um, yeah. But I mean... And it'll still know. give you a like count. You'll be able to see that 50,000 people oh, like okay, this post. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, All that'll right. still be there. You'll still, you know, look. You'll st- you just won't know who it is. I guess, yeah. So well, I don't know, guys. your best friend. I mean, what? that's yeah, weird. That's kind of weird. I don't know. You know, I mean, look, if you can't handle it, don't like something, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Those are your three things. It's 810 on the Morning Blitz with... Kelly Quinn, Thick Rick, and I'm Lewis on Thursday. So. Let's hear it. Yep. <laughs> I am for the record. <laughs> I'm not worried about this at all because it happens on a regular basis. But I do note, I noticed this before. And then a couple of days ago, I noticed it again. Lauren is out of town. Mm-hmm. She is in Chicago for her on job. Business, right? yeah, yeah. She has a. She's attending a food show. So I noticed before, every time she goes out of town, and I know like the girl she's staying with and everything, and they're they're cool, but um, she got her hair cut and colored prior to going out of town. Was it time? Was it was she due for that? I don't know. <laughs> you don't pay attention. I don't to that. see. But uh, I noticed that <laughs> there were things that were on the agenda that had to get done before she left. Hair color, tanning, you know, normal stuff. But I noticed it's prominent. We're talking about someone who loves lounging around. And I don't mean that in the sense that she's lazy. She just likes really comfortable pajama pants yeah, yeah. that kind comfy of thing comfy stuff yeah. right but I mean you both saw her at Sonic yeah. so she can uh-huh. is capable of dressing up oh yeah very much but when she goes out of town I noticed that like we had to prioritize getting the tattoo finished we had to prioritize a haircut or a color and tanning before we left and then like the first couple of pictures I've never seen that dress before <laughs> <laughs> now that doesn't mean anything because she is the queen of ordering stuff that she will probably never wear or order it now and wait for an excuse to wear it kind of thing so again this is all common and i'm not worried but i wonder if anybody in blitz nation does your wife or significant other do the same things before they go out of town or okay. if you are on the other side of that coin why do you do all that? i completely understand what she's doing Absolutely, because I have the same sort of mindset. It's almost like, number one, you're going on vacation. Even though it's a work trip, you are going out of town, and you're going to be with people you don't normally see. You want to be your best self. You want to have glowing skin. You want to have freshly done hair. You want that tattoo finished up. You want a new dress. Like You are ready to present your best self in this work situation, sort of like... When you go on vacation or whatever, it's like, I want to be looking cute at the beach, you know, and I don't have any cute things right now. I need to go order a bunch of stuff. It, I really understand that. But then there was the other thing, too, and I, I know how this goes down, but there was the other thing when I was purchasing stuff for the grad party this weekend. It's like, get me a fifth of Buckeye, Buckeye vodka. I'm taking it with me to Chicago. See? It's the work trip slash vacation vibe. <laughs> so anyway JC said she's showing off for the girlfriend Lewis no worries <laughs> thanks JC <laughs> Doug says she wants to look professional for her job she's representing her company hmm what well, I just Listen, asking if anybody else does this I mean it's like like when we all go to our Christmas party here at work like we're putting a, t- a little extra effort in aren't we I just remember I'll never forget the conversation that I had to endure when I went to um, a Katy Perry 
album listening party once upon a time where I was in said studio with Katy Perry. And it was, oh, look, bought some new clothes, got a haircut before I went out of town. And I didn't even think about it like that. I just was due for a haircut at the time. No, but you're also not going to do an interview with Katy Perry looking like your worst self. You're going to be looking like your best self. I don't right? have a best self. I'm sorry. You do. I'm sorry you had to interview <laughs> Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> she seems like the most annoying person on earth to me sometimes. I you're not disagreeing. <laughs> Say nothing. Ah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. What do you guys think about this? Amanda said, I did all those things before going to Florida without my husband. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know about Amanda. You know, the, and you know the other thing I did first? Looked at Bush's tour schedule. <laughs> I'm glad you said tour schedule. Just to be on the safe side. <laughs> said it before, I'll say it again. I have never encountered a foo anywhere I've gone. So Dave and those guys have been doing a fantastic job. <laughs> that's For pretty good. 20 something years now. <laughs> that's what it t- that's what happens when you do your job right. 824 <laughs> on the morning blitz. It's Kelly Thick, Lewis. So, uh to uh set it all back up for you, Lauren is out of town for business, but prior to her leaving, there were some necessities that had to be done. Tanning, hair color, fifth of vodka. New dress. Yeah, dress I hadn't. I don't know that it's new. I just have never seen it worn before. She'd been waiting for a special occasion. Exactly. (laughs) Now, I'll say 100% of the women who have texted in completely do the same thing as Lauren, and I say I do the same thing as well. You want to present your best self, especially in a traveling work situation, so you're getting the works done. Now, a couple dudes have said, listen, if that's everything's fine unless she's getting a brazilian wax and then you gotta worry good to know <laughs> abby <laughs> said, don't leave out the anus bleaching abby, oh. abby said that she a thousand percent does this yes. i plan hair appointments around events so it's fresh caps i get my greatest clothes and i plan the best outfits new or old i think it's common don't you get a haircut before a trip or an event pack the shirt that doesn't have a rolly neck yeah. to an extent yeah Hmm. Dustin said, BS, she's cheating on you, bro. I know. (laughs) Jamie Bias. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Sean. Uh, Almost all women do this, and she capitalized all. Tasha said, I'm the wife that had to get things done before I have a vacation coming up or a special event is to make myself feel good and confident. So, okay. As I said, I'm not worried. I just wonder if this happens. Do you believe that, Kelly? Uh, That he's not worried? Yeah, I do believe that. I, I, I think you're securing your relationship. Yeah, he sure thought about it, though. He's, he thought, man, she's got all this. Well, no, I, I got basically... to ask the listeners what they think about this. No, I'm, I, I think thought... that there's just massive money output before a work trip, and it's just interesting. I took her on a work trip because, I, and again, this comes from a previous conversation where anytime I would go someplace where it was with a record label, she was like, oh, out of town for a record with a record label, huh? New hair, new outfit, went to Kohl's, got a new shirt, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I finally took her to one with me so she could see what went on. Because, like, in her head, I think she thought it was all kinds of debauchery and everything else. I will say I was at the strip club in Austin, Texas with the Urban Department of Sony Music, and I've never seen more cash flown around than I've ever seen in my life. Oh, the record label. You want to talk about making it rain? Oh, it was pouring. The record label guys love the strip clubs. They do. They would come. When I was in oh. Little Beach, man, they would come into town. It was like, you know, it's like half an hour of business at the radio station, and then Crazy Horse, Dollhouse, let's go, and they're getting Stacks out the cash. label credit card. Yeah. Just, I'm like, Stacks. you guys are nuts. <laughs> like, coming by. So Lauren's right about the debauchery. No. Oh, okay. That's an, that's that's the exception to the to I the gotcha. norm. But no, I took her with me because she know she knew everybody. Like I'm like, this is what it is. It's yeah, really I don't think you're that. worried about what's happening. You, you guys are very secure in your relationship. It's just an interesting thing that you notice. Gino, I did check for sexy underwear. As soon as she left, I started pulling another pair out of the tube. <laughs> Walking around the house in it. <laughs> are Especially you sure? when I know the kids aren't home. Do you know for a fact she didn't get a Brazilian wax? No. no. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't do the search before I before I don't I know, left man. The oh, day I'm up. sorry, Lauren. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, yeah, at least I didn't ask about an anus bleaching. Yet. <laughs> Not going to do that. 
<laughs> Hang on. Let me send the text real quick. Hey. Well, I, I got I to gotta say, I think based on uh, the response we got, yeah, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Not that you were. I'm not saying you were. But, uh, yeah, it just sounds like, you know, girl, I, I know it's a confidence thing with girls. You know, it's not just, they're not just trying to go out and pick up a guy. Girls like to feel good and confident. And if they feel like they look good, they feel confident they can take on the world. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, Kelly, he's I'm concerned kidding. over here. No, not at all. <laughs> Considering I'm like, yeah, I was in bed by 11 the other night. I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> it's the morning blitz that Kelly Lewis, 838. Good morning. Good morning. What's up? I'm good. I'm not sitting in an angry chair at all. <laughs> feeling good about today. Well, this guy who wrote us an email sitting in an angry chair. He's Man. upset. Well, I'd, I would be too. Um, yeah, I got a couple email uh, over the weekend for couples therapy. And, you know, we did one yesterday. And I'm like, you know, this can't wait. And I'm not sure this is couples therapy. Um, because it sounds like his wife has a problem here. And uh, it has nothing to do with him. And if you ever want to email us, if you ever want us to read an email on the air about anything, anything at all, just email thickrick at theblitz.com, whether it's couples therapy or you just want some unbiased advice on anything. Anyway, uh, this one says, I can't take much more. My wife steals stuff and lies about it. <laughs> he said, we have enough money, so there's no reason for this. I've been with her for five years, and this is a new thing that started happening out of the blue a few months ago. I know she's doing it. When I ask for receipts, she will say she got the item as a gift from a friend or she paid with cash and didn't keep the receipt. I'm at a loss for what to do. Basically, I'm either getting divorced or I'm letting her get arrested. Thoughts? Please, no names. I'm like, damn. Okay, how do you know she's doing it? Because is there even the slightest chance... That she actually is getting items as gifts or paid with cash and didn't keep those. Is there a chance of that? Because, man, I would not go around accusing your own wife of shoplifting unless you have proof that she's doing it. Like video proof. That's a hard accusation. Well, maybe that's why he's writing us. He doesn't know what to do. I don't know. He didn't say he hasn't said he confronted her other than she says it was a gift or she paid with cash. So he's obviously asked her about an, right, about a receipt. I, an item here or there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, also, you hear about people who can otherwise afford it shoplift like Lindsay Lohan. Remember oh, yeah. when she um, got busted? Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Yeah, the kleptomaniacs. Yes. Yeah. And they're, it's just like, I don't know what psychological issue would have you Lewis doing says, that? Lewis says it's the rush. It, it is. It's be. the rush. The rush of getting away he, with something. He knows. Like you need to feel something in your life. It's like the people who do the um, cutting yeah. is to get yourself to feel. distracted yeah. from a bunch of crap that's going on. It's like you do that to sort of take all your attention. Yeah. Or they're emotionally numb. Yeah. And so they do that to feel. I wonder if I don't know the psychology of it, man, but you better have proof, solid proof, before you confront her with a shoplifting claim. <laughs> Katrina said, sounds like the wife has a sugar daddy. Mm. <laughs> oh, I didn't think of that. I didn't either. Well, it doesn't sound like our guy who wrote in thought of that either. Yeah, where are the gifts coming from? What friend? Do you know the friend? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Here's the thing, I guess. Oh, unless, like I said, unless you have video proof, solid proof that she has, that she's been shoplifting. I think you need to wait until she gets arrested. I really do. I think that's the, your only route. You can't accuse her of something you don't. Now, if you have proof, confront her with it. Yeah, you kind of need yeah. to be able to say, I told you so on this one. After the fact, after something happens, you can't do it ahead of time. You know, yeah, that. yeah. I don't know, man. That's okay. A, that's a tough All right. one. Can we hire some kind of a private investigator here to 
follow her just maybe for a week. Yeah, because you're saving money, right? So you can spend yeah. some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, she, she's, she's right. not spending up all your money, so you can use some of that money exactly. for a private investigator. <laughs> Although sending a PI after your wife is a really big move as well. JJ. Maybe you can just follow her yourself. Mm. <laughs> JJ said, I saw this episode on Breaking Bad. What? I don't know. I don't know what it is. It? Oh, I saw Breaking Bad. Yeah, I, know. I can't I was... remember the storyline. Hmm. Dave said I don't know. Was it Did... Hank's wife? Was Hank's wife shoplifting? Maybe that was it. I don't know. Ooh, Josh K said maybe they're OnlyFans gifts. Ooh. Lewis knows about that, too. Those are awesome. <laughs> so I've heard. Hmm. No, I think you... I'm kind of on the page with Kelly. You don't want to accuse until you know for sure. Right. But I also think this is a real thing, man. There are people that 100% do believe they got to get the rush. Yeah. Like, let me see if I can get away with it again. Right. But the thing is, is it's covering up a deeper psychological issue. Like something needs to be resolved here if she is actually shoplifting. And it's not just the shoplifting. There's some other pool of issues there Mm. that need to be uncovered. But, um, yeah. Be careful. Tread lightly, man. Why Why are you so suspicious of your wife in such a large way? I guess because she's got all this new stuff and there are no receipts for it. Okay, Dude, I get it. We keep getting texts. Is she spending OnlyFans money? Video mm. proof would be on OnlyFans. I mean, it's like everybody's caught. Every, I mean, there's several texts about OnlyFans. I don't know. Yeah, man. there's something you don't know here, bud. Something you don't know here. Uh, oh, and JJ said Breaking Bad. It was Hank's wife. Yeah, Hank's yeah, wife. Yeah, so that was what you were talking Marie. about. Marie. Yeah. Yes. All right. Gotcha. Man. Yeah. Now, Amanda said uh, back to the, you know, feeling, uh, said when my mom died, I started going crazy with tattoos. I wanted to feel a different kind of pain. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, everybody tries to fill a rush that they used to get that you can't get anymore. You fill it with something else. So like a lot of, I'll use alcoholics as an example. An alcoholic may kick the booze, but they replace that addiction with another. So they might not drink anymore, but they might throw everything into their job. And now they're working 12, 14, 15 hour days or longer. You're replacing one thing with another. So there might, like what you said about having a deeper issue, she might, the rush of stealing might replace some rush she used to get when she was younger or was able to do and now can't. Yeah. Yeah, there's something going on there. There needs to be a psychological probing of what's happening here, but I don't know. Like you, this guy says, I can't take much more. I'm either getting a divorce or letting her just get arrested. Yeah. Like these are massive like options for you. <laughs> mm. And uh, happy birthday to Mickey. Yeah, Joe Fowler's wife. Yes, happy birthday. You have yourself listening. one fantastic birthday day. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope we uh, we helped. I don't know, you know, if we solved your issue, but uh, hopefully we gave you some more things to think about. <laughs> Mike Funk, video proof is on OnlyFans. There it is. That's what you need to do. You need to search OnlyFans and find your wife. Hey, <laughs> fifty on the morning blitz with Dick Kelly and Lewis wrapping up our listener email. Byron said, "If you do find her OnlyFans, send me the link. Asking for a friend." <laughs> uh, Tracy thought the uh, PI. If your if your wife is a kleptomaniac, PI is definitely a way to go. You're not doing it out of malice. You're doing it for peace of mind. Ballpark me how much a PI costs. Anybody uh, know? Like an hourly rate? Or what are we talking about? When they get the like job a, done, you pay them? Isn't it like an attorney where you just you throw down a retainer and they cover yeah. it based yeah, on I don't know. expenses? I've never had to hire a PI. I don't I know. I have no idea. But so uh, curious. Yeah, I want to be a PI. I feel like I'd be good at it. <laughs> cool, right? You Cream would. Yeah. People. You would, uh-huh. Kelly. Uh, but said, uh, you know, if you're right... Then you can address the problems and you have proof. If not, then she doesn't ever have to know that you were Although, trying. Yeah. What if they pegged you as the PI? Everywhere I go, there's the same woman and she's always there scrolling on her phone everywhere. Like they would, <laughs> I think she's watching me. Yeah, but I make do disguises and stuff with oh. a mustache. Uh, I'll have a mustache in my purse. Oh, Throw that bad go. boy on. There you go. Jeez. <laughs> um, all right. I, th- I'm kind of torn on this issue because i am not a caitlin clark fan i do not really like her because she flops you know when she gets bumped on the basketball court she flops and she accused our buckeye fan of knocking her down which was also a flop she clearly we saw the video we all saw it we know what we saw 
So I don't I don't care what anybody says. She ran into our fan and then flopped. All right. Yes. Well, everybody's outraged that she did not make the women's Olympic basketball team. I mm. was honestly, I don't follow anything to do with this, but I was surprised well, as a non-fan of basketball. <laughs> right, because you know her, who she is. I mean, she's so popular yeah, right Yeah, she now. feels like a reason to tune into the Olympics right. women's basketball competition. I, I, and I understand that. And, and, she's doing, and, and she's doing great things like that for the WNBA. People are going to the games. People are turning on the games because of her. That's been the argument uh, that a lot of people have said with Kelly is you're getting, you're talking about a sport that's not one of the highest watched sports in the Olympics and you just gave people another reason not to watch it. I don't care. It's about winning a gold medal. Well, I get, no, I, 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 I'm not arguing with you. Okay. I'm, just, I'm, 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 my, I'm answering to those people. Okay. I don't care. It's not a popularity contest. It's about winning a gold medal. This girl leads the league in turnovers. She gives up the ball 5.4 times a game. The person in second... 4.0 times a game. She is a turnover machine. It's her rookie year. She, you know, it's just like you can be the greatest player in the world in college, but once you get to the pro level, you've got a learning curve. You've got, you know, you it's it's harder. And I believe she's going to be great in the WNBA, and she handled it really well. She said, "Well, that gives me something to work toward." She's only a rookie, you know, but she did not she has not earned a spot on the US Olympic team. You know, and then you, if you give her a spot, you're taking away a spot from somebody who deserves it, who has played great, but they're not as popular as her. So I just like, stop with this. Side Ridiculous. Note. Here's a perfect example. If you want to know why there's such a disparity between men's sports and women's sports, and I will say that uh, since Caitlin Clark has started playing, NBA, WNBA viewership has gone up. But the WNBA jersey looks like a NASCAR. There's so many sponsors <laughs> on that jersey. There's like four or five different sponsors on the jersey, so someone could pay for those uniforms. The NBA, you don't see the Boston Celtics with any kind of logos of other teams on their jersey anywhere, other than the Nike logo, which is the standard right. producer of yeah. everything. Yeah, but well, they the, they need to, they don't need the money. <laughs> on the Fever jersey, there's the Lily, which is the company. There's another company on the back of the yeah. jersey. Like you, you're look. Those women look like NASCAR endorsers. Yeah, yeah. So they can get their uniform paid for. So mm-hmm. that's a disparity right there. Why you know there's not an equal pay scale. That's why they're did not bringing mean, in enough money to pay for their own uniforms. Did you mean disparity? Dispa- thank you. That too. You're What'd you, welcome. What do you say? <laughs> disparity. I make disparity. Up my, sometimes I make up my own words. Are you sure you I didn't like go to though. Grove City? <laughs> yeah, positive. I've also noticed that since Caitlin Clark has been in the WNBA, they have definitely tried to glam her up quite a bit. Yeah, but the the other girls, some of them haven't been very nice to her. Uh, I saw her get. She didn't. Flop. I don't know if anybody else saw it when she got knocked, knocked down by, by the, the one, one girl. Yeah. The play was over, and the girl went right up and slammed her and knocked her to the ground, and then went back and celebrated with her team on the sideline. I'm like, you know. Um, Here's what I'll say. <laughs> I know the name Caitlin Clark, and I know the name Brittany Griner, and at least one of them is going to be on the Olympic team. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm. I'm not even sure. I. I didn't, Brittany Griner is. Brit, I thought yeah. Brittany was, and and she should be. She's amazing. You know. I'll tell you what. I didn't like Brittany Griner, and I wasn't. I wasn't on board with the whole, you know, everybody that was championing Brittany Griner because I was of the mindset that she did that to herself. But I had a tremendous amount of respect for Brittany Griner when Brittany Griner sat down on national TV and said, "Hey, this is all my fault. I know that country had a no weed policy. I brought weed into their country. I have a lot of respect for owning your mistake." And taking credit for, you know, your own situation. So yeah. I give her mad props for that. Yeah. But I, Plus, I, screw Russia. So yeah, give us our people back. Too. We'll deal with it. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of Russia and the Olympics, uh, Russia is reportedly using AI disinformation campaigns to target the Olympics. A Microsoft Threat Analysis Center report claims Russian influence actors have been trying to take down the International Olympic Committee's reputation by planning fear about violence at the upcoming Olympics. They're using fake photos and videos and articles. I'm like, man, these people, what? You know, <laughs> do we just have to always try to make the world a bad place? I mean, why? <laughs> why? Mm. What, is the, what is your motive for that? I don't know. Uh, Rob did say... Because you cheat, and and they don't like it, and they don't let you play as a cheater. 
Rob, ahead. speaking of playing, Rob said that uh, he agrees with you, except maybe Caitlin Clark should have been a injured reserve player. And there's a, I believe she is. There's a lot of people I, that I are think saying she if is. something happens to yeah. one of the other players, she'll be one of the next call. I up. believe she is a reserve in that case. So, but yeah, she's got to, you know, she's got to earn her spot. I mean, she's just a rookie. It's, it's, you know, I'm, I, it's like CJ Stroud played great last year as a rookie. But he doesn't have three rings like Mahomes because he hasn't got to that point yet. Right. You know? So, it's just, you know, and, and I again, she handled it great. I, nothing against, I'm not saying anything against her because she was the one who came out and said, well, I, you know, it's something to work toward. Yeah. You and that's a great attitude. You could put Caitlin Clark in a monkey suit in the Olympics and I still won't watch basketball. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's the problem they're having, although they are having attend- higher attendance since Caitlin Clark's been playing than they have in previous years. You know what I want? I want diving. I want swimming. I want break dancing. Break dancing. I got it, too. <laughs> I, yeah, won't I won't watch running. Why am I watching running's this? Boring. It's I so boring. Yeah, but swimming's fun. Yeah, I love the diving. Diving's Those the crazy best. Crazy dives. Man. Diving's so good. Two words. Three. Women's beach volleyball. Oh, God. oh, that is good though. It's that's some good play. Sure I is. like it. I you he know has a lot, no of, idea. A lot of good play. He has no idea how <laughs> yeah. good the play is. Jeez. <laughs> I am confident how good the play what is. What are Thank the other you. summer Olympic sports? I don't yeah, even know. Cares? Well, you got, I like the water sports and I like I love the idea of break dancing. I will yeah. watch that. Yeah, well, I mean soccer and baseball. No, Wait a minute, no. is baseball back? No. Uh, no. I don't know. Is Marco what Polo? Do you mean, no, soccer's there. Is no, Marco, no, no. I mean I won't watch. Oh. I'm saying no to watch. There's no baseball? Is Marco Polo a sport in the Summer Olympics? I have no idea. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, (laughs) Marco! Yeah, all the running, though, that all the track and field events. The high jump, the long jump. Uh, Now, I tell you, the the pole vault's pretty cool. I do like the pole vault. Okay. Am I dumb? Is is uh, gymnastics in the winter? Yes. Or is it in the summer? No, gymnastics is in the summer. Oh, yeah, oh man, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll yeah, watch gymnastics. Uh, what's her face? Simone Biles is about yeah. to go. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's right. I'm, yeah. I'll it's definitely watch gymnastics. Ice skating in the winter. It's gymnastics yeah. in the yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And now, three things you need to know before you go. All right. So we all remember the Wisconsin dad who ran up on stage at his daughter's graduation a couple weeks ago, pushed the school superintendent out of the way so he did not shake his daughter's hand. There is a small update on this story. The father, his name's Matthew Eddy, he uh, originally said that he, uh, he and his daughter had some past issues with the superintendent, Rainey Briggs. But we never found out what, what yeah. were those issues. And then people were like, is this a racial thing, etc. cetera. Uh, but uh, Rainey Briggs, or and I'm sorry, but uh, th- uh, yeah, Rainey Briggs is the superintendent. So Matthew Eddy says, I had problems with him. Rainey Briggs now says... When Matthew Eddy rushed the stage, he had absolutely no idea who this guy was. They have never had any prior interaction. Oh, really? According to the superintendent. Never met the guy. What the superintendent did say is that Eddie's daughter had been expelled at one point from the school, but he didn't say why. Obviously, it's private. He's not going to say why, but that the girl had been expelled at some point. So that may have been the issue that father and daughter had with the superintendent. Um, but we do know that uh, Matthew Eddie is under a temporary restraining order right now, cannot have any contact with Rainey Briggs, and a hearing on that order is scheduled for tomorrow. All right, I know, so crazy. Uh, to and infantile, and if I was the daughter, I would have been absolutely humiliated. Right, that's uh, it's humiliating. All right, two years in prison for this guy. It is Oregon man, man who spiked the smoothies of his twelve-year-old daughter's three friends with depressant drugs during a sleepover last August. So this guy's name's Michael Maiden, and he pleaded guilty this week to three counts of causing another person to ingest a controlled substance. Police went to the house to investigate and seized five prescription bottles of the insomnia pill to mazepam. They also seized scales, razor blades, and pill grinders from uh, Michael Maiden's home. He admitted to putting those drugs in the girls' mango smoothies. He said the reason he did it, because he wanted the girls to get a good night's sleep, because they all had big day of activities planned the next day. (laughs) 
Seriously? <laughs> yeah, right, buddy. He said, oh, he also didn't want the preteens sneaking out of the house. So he decided to drug them. Now, I don't know if any of that true. It doesn't sound right. I do know that one of the girls wasn't quite out. She was really sleepy, but noticed that this guy was kind of standing over her at one point during the sleepover. And then at midnight, she texted her mom. and She's like, you have to get me out of here. Please come get me this. I don't feel safe. There's something wrong here. So... I don't know what went down, but they ended up making some kind of plea deal, and he's getting two years in prison for it. Very Uh, weird. Very weird. All right. Well, um, I want to talk about the reboot of the movie Blade, because they cannot seem to keep a director for this reboot. They they started prepping for production two years ago, but the then-director, Bassam Tariq, left. So Marvel Studios brought in a man named Jan Demange, and now he's left. So the only thing that's still the same now is that they want to do the movie. And the man who will be starring is the half-human vampire hunter Blade. Uh, Marshala Ali is still in. So that's all we know. Production on the movie is likely being delayed once again. But they say they're still shooting for a November 2025 Wait, This was Wesley Snipes? Wesley yes. Snipes did the original. Yeah. He's not in this? No. No. Oh, there's rumor that he will be a cameo. They wanted... Here's uh, the thing. Whatever. They wanted to go with a younger Blade, which makes sense because they're... You know, it's Marvel. But Marshana Ali is getting older by the day. And he's not necessarily... You know, when Wesley Snipes played Blade originally, he was younger already than Marshall Ali is now. And I've said his name wrong three times. I'm sorry. Now, part of this comes into play with the fact that you had, when all this was announced, you had a pandemic followed by a writer's strike. So that's where part of this comes into play. The other part of this is some of the stuff that Marvel tried didn't work. Blade originally tied in with the Eternals. There's a cut scene at the end where you have Marshala Ali's voice as Blade in it. Well, they're not going in that direction because they're not doing a sequel to Eternals because Eternals didn't do well. So part of this is the fact that Marvel internally changing their plans and punting where their storyline was originally supposed to go has caused some of the delays, which has caused one of the directors to leave. Now they have another one. I don't know why this guy's leaving, but I know Marvel has jumped in and been really cracking down on some of the things that they are doing. They Captain America 4... Uh, was supposed to be out already. They've redid a lot of that because they're changing some stuff around. So you have a lot of stuff going. I mean, again, it's not their fault. They had a great run with Endgame, and then everything that followed has had one string of problems after another. And now, even though you make $400 million you're and you're a Marvel movie, that's considered a failure. Because everything else has made so much money. I know you really know this world. So who would be your dream director? For Blade? For, yeah, Blade. The dude who did um, Black Panther, Ryan Cogler. Oh, the guy who did Creed. The guy I who did Black, Black Panther. Panther. Oh, gosh, I love Black that's Panther. Who I would, that's so who I good. would do. But he, I mean, he's going to be tied into other things. So yeah. he won't do it. I don't like Marshawn. I'm nothing against Marshawn Ali. I don't like him as Blade either. I agree with Rick. you got to bring Wesley Snipes in at least as a cameo <laughs> or something. Yeah. But, you know whatever what? little known fact everybody says blade started the comic book uh movie franchise made them huge not true they never build blade as a comic book character they blade they build it as a vampire thriller because comic book movies were not cool in 1998 oh, or 99 when i can't blade imagine came out. that can't yeah. imagine the day when that wasn't so, cool yeah. all right well there thank you, you. now all that right. i've thrown my geekdom out there for no, the world I love to it. bite I love into it. all right those are your three things